So, some of you may have heard that this is going to be the last generation of the Audi A1. The question is no, would I still recommend the Audi A1? Is it as good as other Audis? Well, let's find out. Hello everyone, welcome to Everything Cars and More. Let's review the Audi A1. Let's start with the front of the car. The design at the front is very Audi. The car has a very modern design with these LED headlights and these cool LED daytime running lights graphics in them. We also have a respectable sized grille and some fake air vents on top to give this car a sportier look. Down we have a small central vent and some reasonably sized side vents and the overall look of the car is sporty and youthful. Moving down the side, we have some sharp creases just below the door handle, which gives the car a sporty look. You can also opt for a dual colour paint scheme with a black contrasting roof. One thing I would like different though, is that I would like some better wheel options, as some of them can be quite boring for an Audi. And the smart wheels are kept for the high and expensive trim levels, which is a shame really. Moving round the back, we have a really cool design. To start with, it looks very similar to the older generation A1, but we have these 3D tail lights which I really do like. We also have a little spoiler and some fake side fence on the bumper, but apart from that there's not a lot to talk about. Let's have a look at the engine choices. So the engine lineup is actually quite simple. There is a 1 litre engine either with 93 brake horsepower or 110 brake horsepower. The 93 brake horsepower version has a 5 speed manual gearbox but the 110 brake horsepower version has a 6 speed manual. Both of these cars can be had with the S-Tronic automatic gearbox as well. Finally for the S-Line and Black Edition models you can have a 1.5 litre engine with 148 brake horsepower. This can only be had with the S-Tronic automatic gearbox though. The price of the Audi A1 starts at £19,360, which I think is actually quite reasonable. Let's have a look on the inside. So, climbing inside we have a very luxurious feel to such a small car. To start with we have some big car technology. The digital instrument cluster and the infotainment system are exactly what you would find in the more expensive Audis as well as other parts like the switch gear. We also have a nice dashboard layout that again makes this car feel a lot more premium than what it actually is. We also get some comfy and supportive seats. The centre console is also angled towards the driver making it more driver orientated. You can also opt for premium options like a Sonos sound system. Let's have a look at the rear seats. So climbing in the back there's no surprise that it's not the most practical car in the world but then again you would not expect that. Tall people on short journeys will be fine in the back as headroom and legroom is just okay. Sitting free in the back though no, is a squeeze but you do get isofix anchor points so for beginner families or small families it will suit them well. Let's have a look at the boot size to see if this will suit them well. So opening the boot, we can see we have a wide opening area as well as a very good sized boot. With the seats up you get 335 litres and with the seats down you get 1090 litres. This actually makes the car rival the class above in terms of boot size. So what do I think about the Audi A1 then? Well it is a very good small hatchback with big Audi car tech. This car is still very relevant in today's world and if you would like to get into the Audi brand for a good price then this is the best place to start. If you like this video please don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.